Hi there Paint Shop Pro users, welcome to my site and welcome to this video tutorial. This is a video tutorial on the information on the web page you're on. If you're on YouTube, you can visit the web page and you get the text versions as well. This is about converting an image to black and white using two hue and saturation layers. It's developed by a fellow named Russell Brown who's a Photoshop guru and I've just adapted it for Paint Shop Pro because it works. So let's get started with this. This is our uh, layers palette and like any good Paint Shop Pro user I've made a copy of this because I might want this raster one later. You never know. Okay, so let's get started. New adjustment layer, hue and saturation lightness. We're going to desaturate it. And we're going to call it film. There we go, film. Now it's made of black and white. Kind of a boring black and white, but it's black and white nonetheless. Now we're going to do this all over again. Hue and saturation lightness. We're going to call this filter. And we're going to change its blend mode to color legacy. If you're using an older version of Paint Shop Pro and you're getting all weirded out because you don't have color legacy, well in fact you do. It's the uh, Paint Shop Pro Photo X2 people who should be happy they've got this legacy, which is the older version. The new one doesn't work quite as well, at least on this technique. So let's go back here. Click OK. This is our, our layers palette now. Now what I'm going to do is double tap here with my pen, or double click if you're a mouser, and it's going to bring up the hue and saturation dialog again, and then we're going to work with that. Okay, so I'm just going to move this out of the way so it doesn't distract from the image. There we go, and here is our thing. Here's our thing. Here's our layers property dialog. Now when, you've, when you're ready to go, what you've got is this master selected and we're going to adjust the hue so watch what happens make sure you have got preview on image checked move it down watch the whole image boom changes changes again there's a million ways of doing this now I could say okay for this and say I'm finished because that's that's much more dramatic I love these black skies but I'm not going to do that okay so that's what you do with the master that's fairly quick and fairly easy now I'm going to change this back to one its default position and now I'm going to drop this dialog down. Ah, now the reds. Now when I move the hue slider, only the reds will be affected. And that is the range from here, which is kind of an orangey color, over to this kind of purpley color. So you can actually drag these like this, and like this. You can move this in, make it smaller, so your range of reds is getting smaller. Or you can make it bigger, whatever you want to do. Now let's move it around a bit. See, it's not going to make much change because we really dialed it down, but it is making some change. Uh, I'm going to take it out a bit farther to the... There, you can see something happened when I did that. Over here, you can see something happening over there as well. So that's what you do with this thing. You just fiddle around with it to get it right, or you just leave it the way it's set up yellows. Now you can see the yellows kind of go into the reds, so if we mess with the yellows we should get in the reds doing something as well. So let's bring this down. See it lightened up the building. Something in here is red because it changed. And you can go back and forth and back and forth with this. And when you're doing it, you don't have to have it sitting over top of the image like I do because I'm doing a tutorial, in case you didn't notice. Uh, the greens. The greens will drive you crazy because they don't seem to do very much to anything. Now I've tried this technique with all kinds of different images, with all kinds of different greens, nothing much ever happened there. So I'm gonna drag this down here and see what happens. These these things are green. They've got maybe a bit darker. I'm up here, nah, they don't do very much. So we're gonna forget the greens right now. We're gonna go to the cyans. Cyan, as you see, is down here in the bluey area. And let's take, whoops, let's take this across. Ah, look at that, huh? Starting to get the color, the darker color up there. And that's the blue area. So I'm, I'm working to make sure I got a nice dark sky. Everything else can fall where it may. I'm, I'm working on this guy. Ooh, like that. Yeah, okay. Blues, oops. And the last one are the magentas. And you can see the magentas are starting with the the end of blue into purple, around pink, uh, kind of up into the reds. So we may see some adjustment there. Depends on where it is. It just has to find it in the image. 
I don't see much happening, but I'm sure something is going on somewhere. Okay, so we're gonna we're just gonna accept that. There we go. That's the image now. Let's take this filter layer, undo it here. That's where we started. That's where we are now. Big difference, right? Now you notice in the desaturate, the greens are are pretty much black. And when I put the filter on, somehow the greens got lighter. I have no idea how that happened, but it did. I'm happy about that. Okay, so we're over halfway through in time, and I still have something I want to do. And obviously that would be a layer mask, a mask layer. you got to do mask layers as much as you can. Okay, I'm going to merge the filter into the copy of the raster by doing merge down. Now I'm going to merge film into the copy of the raster. Merge down. Now I'm going to go and get a new mask layer, show all. So nothing is going to change. And because the mask layer is white, I need to paint with black to bring stuff back. So the black is going to punch a hole in that white mask. Okay, so there's black as my foreground color. Uh, I got my brush. Now let's do... Ah, look at that, huh? Uh -huh. As if by magic. And we can do this to... I've done this one so many times to try and get it right that I know that Wayne Brady has some color in his in his banner here. There. And there's some blue here. I don't know who this guy is. And we can bring the phantom back. Phantom's got lots of red in it. And there's a bit of red over here. And if I was really doing this to try and be a, an incredibly artistic individual, I would certainly be taking a lot more time and zooming in and out. And I know there's a yellow taxi right here. Ah, big yellow taxi. Old Joni Mitchell song. Okay, there. So that is what the mask layer has done. And there is our original color. I just turned off the, the mask layer group. Turned it back on again. And we might be able to find other places we want to bring some color back. Now uh, there's a red car here. Top of this taxi thing here. So you can go through and do what you want. Or you don't have to do any of this. Uh, but you can use mask layers anywhere. Um, as long as you've got a, a, a background and something else above it, you can use a mask layer. And you can see where the black is, those where the holes were punched. So the color here is coming through those holes, which is, I guess, in here, and it's showing up at the top, which is really, really cool and very, very useful. So there you go. So what have we covered here? We've covered the dual hue and saturation um, black and white technique. Um, the merge down thing and uh, mask layer. So I guess, you know, we've covered a lot. So I really do appreciate you watching this and I hope that you find this useful. Um, this is for those folks who just love black and white. I love black and white. It is such a neat medium. And if you don't believe it, go and check out the work of Ansel Adams or Joseph Karsh. They do amazing stuff. Both gentlemen are passed on now, but they left us beautiful, beautiful images. So thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it so much. And uh, we'll see you on the next tutorial. Bye now.